Good afternoon. Welcome once again to this program. Uh, today we have two guests online. One of them is M Mrs. Mary Mukindia, who is with, joining us via Zoom. And we also have Elam Kimotho, a student, who is also joining us over Zoom. Now I'll start this discussion today with talking to Mary Mukindia um, to just find out her thoughts about this period because every cloud has a silver lining. So good afternoon, Mary. Mrs. Mukindia, how are you? Good afternoon, Rose. Uh, I'm not sure how well I am. Today I'm, on, uh, today I'm good, but it's usually a roller coaster. But today I'm good. Thank you for asking. Well, thank you for taking the time to join us today. We'd like to discuss with our viewers and get your thoughts uh, about this period. We are going into our third period of lockdown, and I'd like to understand uh, what your views are, how you've been spending your time, and uh, what are the silver what are the silver linings around this cloud of COVID in the last uh, three months or so? <laughs> um, thanks for asking. Well, I think one of the things that I have found, and uh, because I'm also an emotional coach as well as being a leadership coach, so I've been participating in quite a lot of free webinars, talking to people about their experiences and giving them tips as an emotional intelligence coach on how to take the period, is that Working from home is actually a challenge for a lot of people. And in a lot of those webinars, we were asking them what are the challenges they have found working from home and comparing them with challenges that people in Europe through a study that was done in November of last year about what are the challenges working from home. And whilst we found there were similar challenges in Africa and particularly in East Africa, because we did the webinars in Tanzania as well, we found that we had um, challenges that perhaps in Europe they don't have. One was infrastructure, the issue of the internet. So you find you're chairing a meeting or in a board meeting or you're training and the internet goes off. Every, you know, and it's repeatedly. This morning I was talking with a, a major global company, Mitsui, and as we were chatting, doing a presentation, you know, his electricity went off. And that was the second time this morning the electricity had gone off. Right. So you find that a number of us are using two, three networks. We're going into modems. And I also am experiencing electricity uh, cutouts. Tanzania, far more. We are very lucky here in Kenya. But Kenya had a very great penetration. So infrastructure was much more high in Tanzania than here. What we found in Kenya and for a lot of people here, were one is it's really um, distractions. How do you stop the distractions? I remember a gentleman who wrote and said that his house has become a restaurant, a school, an office, as well as being a house. So how do you manage your time and, and make sure that you're still able to, 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 to work? And one of the tips we were giving is creating boundaries, physical boundaries, as well as time boundaries. Don't try and compete with the children and do your work, your Zoom calls, your office, whether it's Microsoft or Google calls. Find a time where it's separate from the children. Is it late at night? There's no longer a working day that you can say, I work from eight to five. You might work from six in the morning till nine, and then the, the rest of the day do other tasks. Then you're working maybe late afternoon. I'm nocturnal, so I work late into the night. 3 a.m., 4 a.m. is fine. So that was one of them, creating boundaries for yourself, both time and create a desk area where your family are aware. This is mommy's work area. This is daddy's work area. You cannot come between this time and that time. So I have actually put a desk in my sitting room in a corner, as you may not be able to see, but uh, I could share that on the chat line. And, you know, and I feel quite good about it. The other issue was about unplugging. People are finding it very difficult to unplug because literally uh, your office and all your customers or whoever deal with, they think you're available now 24-7. The last was Zoom call at 8, 7 in the evening. Uh, calls are coming in any time. What is lunch hour? There's no longer any lunch hour. So we're really working with people and telling them, you need to unplug. You also need to unplug from social media. You need to unplug from WhatsApp groups. You need to create times where you can get your head straight for yourself and just not be caught up and immersed with all these, um, you know, messages, videos. So create a time for yourself and say, I'm going to unplug. I'll not take calls beyond this time. I will not take calls beyond that time. The third one, and there were a number, but the last one I might mention, which I actually suffer from, is about... Um, how do you stay motivated to work? 
You know, when you're in an office situation, there are people, there are colleagues, you meet at the coffee desk, you will call quickly, you will chat, and you know it's a work area, but now you're at home. How do you make sure you get up and shower every day? And we have to admit, perhaps all of us are not showering daily. Um, how do you get up and look smart and dress up and, and show up for work? How do you make sure that, you know, you, 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 you know so what are the tips? We say create a list, uh, don't try and multitask. So a lot of people, all of us are going through uh, times and it's for us to use emotional intelligence, look after ourselves, practice self-care, but know you're not alone. And some of these tips and discussions we have, they're common across, maybe for us working from home has always been different in Kenya, in Africa, but we're perhaps catching with the rest of the world and it's going to be the new normal. Well, yeah, those are extremely valid points you've made and very helpful um, because like you said, it's going to be a new normal. But I just needed to get your views on what is lost. People say in future, this is going to be the new normal. A lot of companies will not get employees back to work or a big chunk of their employees will carry on working at home because they have realized it is doable. But what is the downside to that? What is lost through Zoom? After all, human communication is not just visual. There are other senses. You need to see people touch, judge their body language. Isn't there a lot that is lost when all you have is a face on a screen? and you can't communicate through other forms of you know, body language, feel, touch. What is lost in this, um, in this setup? Yeah, there is something lost because you know, human beings were emotional creatures and we, 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 are, we, we live in groups and um, you know, uh, it's important for us to be in groups and connect. And so that personal contact, particularly let's say for us as Africans, even some communities from warm areas, we're very relational. Um, that is lost. But with their tips of how can you do, how can you be able to catch up on that? What, what can you counter that with? So we are also urging people, and I had a, a, a girlfriend's call on a Friday where we share a glass of wine. We are all on the screens and we're sharing wine, we're talking. And actually we had a good time, we're laughing and we're able to, um, to connect with each other. Employees are doing that. But certainly that human connection, that, that um, ability to kind of see somebody's face, read that body language. But in a sense, it's also very funny. It's making us very economical. It's making us more efficient because you can't, you know, we tend to be very long-winded the way we talk, we tell stories. Now we're ending to be very precise, to use words that mean what we mean, and to be able to give the space to the other person and say, um, did you hear what I said? Then the person repeats to them, okay, I take it you mean this and this. So in terms of communication, we're getting more efficient. And I do hope, obviously, that of course this will end and we'll go back to connecting. But I think that we'll go back to connecting in even more efficient ways. I do know it's taxing. When I've had a, a, a Zoom meeting two hours or I'm facilitating a meeting, after three hours, I end up really tired because you're focusing. I don't have all the other physical things to see how people are talking. I have to be attentive throughout. I can't ask some my colleague, what did they say? So it is very taxing for you as a person to stay two hours, three hours engaged, listening to every word um, through even very not clear connections. And I do hope it will, it, will, it will end because the downside, as you ask, is that ability to see you to see the full body language, not just the words, you know? And in many of the calls, we have to mute the video so that we use audio because it's very heavy on the network. So there's definitely something we, we are losing. And I hope that when this is over, we can perhaps regain it, but maybe be more efficient then on how we we'd communicate. Yeah, interesting. I'd like to hear the views of a, a, a member of the millennial generation, because as we know, the young people, uh, in the, of that generation were communicating through social media and using the online uh, what we are being forced to do our generation right now and um, they have done that for the last five years or so and that's been one of the complaints we have had so i'd like to know how they are managing at this time do they find a difference i'd like to get the views of ilam kimoto do you think something is lost with this form of communication or is it business as usual for your generation and uh, for you and your friends um, well, for us, it still feels normal, but then now the meeting part is the issue because we can't leave the house. We can't, you know, meet together with friends and um, other people. So it's become very frustrating sometimes because you have to just talk online, video calls, 
and just you know just not be able to meet each other at the places you like to go like restaurants you know yeah so it's been very tough <laughs> Has it also, because now you're forced to stay indoors, has it opened new avenues uh, for you to learn new skills or visit, get new information, visit sites uh, online and find ways, you know, new ways of, of enterprise, of making money um, online? Has this opened up new opportunities in this period, do you think? As for me, personally, it's helped me learn how to make websites and how to at least think of a way to make money online like through videos or tutorials and stuff like cooking shows so i've been using it wisely kind of this i mean this whole epidemic we've been using i've been using my computer just to learn more and just see how i can expand my knowledge and skills and it's been okay i mean it's still a bit slow but i'm still learning a few things here and there reading some books but yeah it's been helping. Great, and to know especially about the part of reading books. So this will offer opportunities. I'd like to turn back to Mary Mukindia to ask, uh, for as an employer, are there changes in as far as the work ethic and productivity is concerned? Because when people, everybody is working from home, um, how do you supervise your workforce? How do you ensure they are actually being productive, and they are not spending time surfing other sites? Um, how do you, without micromanaging, how do you manage and make sure the output doesn't, doesn't fall during this period? That's an interesting question. And actually, it's, it's sort of raised its head severally. And maybe this is one of the good silver lining in, uh, in Kenya and in countries such as ours, in that in terms of leadership styles, we, we have always seen a very autocratic or a very top-down leadership style where the boss knows everything, the boss is in charge, the boss is a command style leadership, which doesn't really engage employees. And time has shown, particularly for the millennials as Ilam and others, in today's modern world, you have to engage your employees. You have to be vulnerable. You have to be an authentic leader who's able to connect and people work for you because they want to work for you, not because you're the boss. So it's been very challenging for leaders who have perhaps I might call it an old fashioned style, who it's about uh, mistrusting everybody, not connecting with people. And, and for people who just say, I, I'm only bringing my work character to work. People bring their whole self to work. They bring their issues, their troubles, their mother is sick, their child is sick. That is a whole being who comes to work. And there are many employers who say, that's your private business. We just want you to work. And that's it. You can't work. And therefore, most leaders are being challenged. And we're seeing ourselves having from a, from a coaching uh, you know, kind of avenue to start giving them new tools of how to manage people. And you know, a good leader leads with emotional intelligence. A good leader has a coaching skill, you know, has a coaching style of managing people. A good leader trusts their people and first of all, makes himself or herself trustworthy. So it's really challenging the whole way of working where you have to regard the people just as a person like you. You happen in this situation to be the one giving the leadership, but I'm part of it. And it is, it is actually very challenging for, for leaders because if you have an employee who's engaged, who loves their work, who understands what they're doing, who is managed through a coaching style, who is seen as a person with all their other issues, Yes, your mother is sick. Sorry, you don't have to come to work. That's fine. Yes, you didn't finish. What challenges are you meeting? How can I, as your leader, help you meet the deadline? What do you need from me to support you to achieve? That kind of leadership is the one that's shining at the moment because employees are saying, how can I come in? I love my company. I love my boss. I want to work. But if you've been reeling through the, you know, the, the stick and instead of the carrot and it's about must produce, I don't care about your lifestyle, this and that, then you can't force somebody to, to, to deliver. They, you know, as opposed to the office, he could come and sit there and was always anyway on Facebook doing other things. But now you actually are very dependent on this person. So it's a new relationship um, of leader and, 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 and um, the, the staff to say, how do we achieve this together? It's going to be a new, new lifestyle. 
Do you think this period has exposed for a lot of organizations a lot of extra fat, a lot of staff that perhaps they did not need? And uh, do you think after this period a lot of uh, companies will downsize uh, and trim off a lot yes. of excess manpower? And what impact do you think that will have? Actually, a very insightful question and a great question. And the answer is yes. I've already got two companies. One is actually a, a major multinational uh, all over the world. And they have actually been asking, goodness, what are we doing? What are all these people doing? Because they're all working from home. Uh, people are accomplishing their tasks in lesser time. So I think, yes, there will be... Um, a very much reduction in a number of offices. I think also people will automate. Uh, for example, um, in a number of the board meetings, I had senior clients tell me they used to have to fly out to Europe to go to board meetings. You know, that's a whole eight hour flight. Then you rest one night, then you go to the meeting, then you come back. So any trip was very expensive. It's three, four days out of the week. Those meetings are still happening very efficiently. I'm on an international um, human resource. Um, a task force. We've been meeting on the web. I've participated in one of my companies. Somebody's in, um, we're two people from London. Somebody was from Geneva. We have someone in their house in Nairobi. I'm here. And then the office themselves, they were there, but they were social distancing. So you'll see less travel and less sort of people having to go. But at the same time, there are industries that are actually growing very rapidly. There are people making money at this time. We've seen what's happening to delivery companies. We've seen uh, the delivery, the logistics sector. We've seen the the technical data sector. We've seen the medical uh, infrastructure, telemedicine. So whilst some will be going down, I think we'll be seeing others rapidly increasing, looking at what they, they can do. But definitely for a number of companies, I do see reductions in manpower, in them becoming more efficient. But then those talents can always go and do something else. And that's what it's important to be resilient, to re-engineer yourself. I mean, look at me, I'm 62. I was in the oil industry you know, for 17 years. Then I went into, you know, uh, global um, international business in the UN. So I was kind of uh, an oil guru for clean fuels. And then I finished that. I was a board director for a number of years, a business consultant. And now I'm in the people side. So I think it's possible to re-engineer yourself 